We gotta get this fish in. I don't know how I'm gonna land him. Got him. Yes. All right, guys, we just made it down to the river. I have not even looked at what this spot looks like yet, but hopefully we have good flows and some salmon pushing up. I really have no idea what awaits. But, uh, oh, wow, creek, creek is low. The creek is very low. Um, not to say there aren't fish in here, though. There, there are definitely fish in here. So we're going to go down here and uh, get up. Oh, my God, oh, my God. Look at that. All right, I just spotted a king salmon. They're, they're in this creek, which is awesome. Look at that fish. Oh, he's just sitting there, okay. Spotted the first fish of the day. That is a great sign. Whenever you're out here, you wanna locate where the fish are and then figure out what you need to throw to catch them. I got jigs, I got spoons, spinners, you name it, I got it in my box. And we're gonna get aggressive reaction strikes from these fish. Hopefully show you guys how to catch king salmon out of tiny, small water that everyone else is gonna overlook. A lot of guys wanna fish the Salmon River, Oswego, the big tributaries that pump in a lot of water Lake Ontario. However, these fish will really run up wherever they can which is really cool. Like the king salmon are gnarly. I have some wild mint growing right at my feet here. This is, that's awesome. Look at all this mint. It smells amazing. I'm gonna start munching. I'm gonna start catching. Let's do this. Well, there's a king salmon that didn't quite make it. That's like a 20, 25 pounder. What I'm doing right now is I'm scouting out each pool, seeing if I can find any fish. Right now I'm throwing a 1 8 ounce moon eye jig head with a little plastic grub on the back. The idea for this bait is to make it look like a bait fish that might piss off the king. A lot of times the kings are gonna either eat spoons, spinners, grubs. I might stalk around and move up to the head of the pool because it's always easier to fish from upstream to down for these kings. You wanna flutter it in front of their face and try to get them to bite it when they're pissed off. I'm not even sure if there's a fish in this pool yet. Let's get right up there because this pool is looking like one of the better ones I've seen so far. So it definitely could hold some fish and this could be the spot where we catch the first fish of many of the day. So right now I'm gonna really hug the brush and try to make as stealthy of an approach up here as possible. Go under these logs and do anything so I don't spook these fish. Oh, a key tactic for the king salmon is that they are not dumb fish. These fish, if they're spooked, they're not gonna bite. I don't see any fish so far, but I'm actually gonna take a step back and just start casting downstream, see what happens. Because, like I said, with these kings, sometimes you won't see them. Sometimes they're in very distinct spots in the river. I'll show you guys exactly where a king would be sitting in this run. You see the current line right here. You got the back of the pool, some slow-moving water. It turns into riffles. And then you see the bend in the river right there, right where the water starts to slow down and bend. That's where a king's going to be sitting. Could be sitting a little bit further back in the current. These fish use the current to their advantage. So you always want to be fishing, at least for the aggressive kings that you're not trying to floss, the ones that are going to bite. They're going to be sitting in the current. So I'm just going to cast the grub somewhere in here maybe in the back of the pool sometimes it takes multiple casts in a certain area if there's a fish to get a bite and these kings will actually cut across a big portion of the river to get the bait you actually don't have to put it right in front of their face all the time i've seen kings come 20 30 feet across the river to bite oh my god he just took it oh my god big fish oh that's a king <sighs> guys we just hooked in to the first king salmon out of this teeny tiny creek just freaking smoked the grub. Oh my God, this fish has a ton of power. Oh my God. Watch out, we got one on. We got one. Whew, this is honestly crazy. Like I'm fishing some of the smallest water that I've ever seen for King Salmon. This fish is literally running me straight up the river. Oh my goodness. This is like a wild trout stream that you find in New Jersey, yet there are 20, 30 pound giant King Salmon and we just hooked into one. I don't quite know how I'm going to land this fish. This is a very powerful river monster that we have on the end of my line right now. This is a huge king. This is a really huge king. All right. He's actually kind of chilling for me for a second. Not for long. Well, this fish is sort of at a dead end right here. He can't really go much further than this unless he's planning on going through the trees. And with my line, he can't do that. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, 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 come on, come on. We gotta get this fish in. I don't know how I'm gonna land him. Got him. Yes. Guys, this has gotta be one of my most ridiculous catches ever. 20, 25 pound king salmon out of the tiniest creek I've ever seen. No more than 10 feet wide, two feet deep, right in the mouth on this artificial lure I was using. I was using a little grub. Let me show you guys. Literally right there, side of the mouth, on the grub. Oh my God. Got my pliers handy so I can pop this grub right out. Get this fish back on his way to see if he's ready to go. 
right back into the hole he came from so this fish can continue spawning catch and release is what it's all about right here guys 